From the ancient Greek goddess to Marilyn Monroe and the rise of plastic surgery in the 90s, every era has had its own idea of the perfect bust size. And for many women, living up to that ideal has felt like a full-time job. Whether you're curvy, flat, or somewhere in between, the pressure to have the right breasts is real and it's exhausting. Welcome to Laura Jane Atelier, and in this video, we dive into the obsession with breasts, a body part that's been at the center of beauty standards for centuries. But here's the real question, why are we so obsessed with boobs? What is it about this part of the body that has defined femininity, driven fashion trends, and even influenced personal identity for generations? But where did it all start? How did we go from corsets to implants, from body shaming to body positivity? In this video, we'll uncover the history, the myths, and the undeniable curve curse that has shaped generations of women. Stick around, because we're about to break down the rise of fake boobs, the shame of being flat, and how the modern woman is taking control over her own narrative. Chapter 1. The History of Bust Let's take a deep dive into the past and trace how the perception of the female bust has transformed over the centuries. The fascination with the female chest isn't just a modern trend. It's been shaping ideals of beauty and femininity since the dawn of civilization. In ancient Greece and Rome, the bust was viewed as a symbol of fertility and divine beauty. Goddesses like Aphrodite and Venus were often depicted with full, rounded breasts, symbolizing abundance, health, and motherhood. These images reflected the cultural belief that a woman's body, particularly her chest, was tied to her reproductive power and sensuality. Sculptures from this time period, like the iconic Venus de Milo, celebrated the bust in a way that balanced beauty with fertility, a dual representation of allure and life-giving power. However, this ideal wasn't shared by all ancient cultures. In ancient Egypt, for instance, the female body was portrayed quite differently. Statues of goddesses showed smaller, more modest bust, which reflected a different view of femininity, one that prioritized regal dignity and spiritual power over sensuality. Fast forward to the Middle Ages, and you'll notice a drastic shift. The church's influence during this period meant that beauty standards were no longer about celebrating a woman's body in all its forms, but rather about restraint and modesty. Small, minimized busts were in vogue as they symbolized virtue, chastity, and purity. Paintings and tapestries of the time often depict women with flattened chest wrapped in layers of fabric to conceal their curves. The chest wasn't something to be flaunted, it was something to be hidden, as it represented temptation and sin. But as the Renaissance dawned, so did a shift back towards celebrating the female form. Artists like Botticelli once again highlighted curvier figures, showcasing fuller breasts as symbols of beauty and maternal grace. The ideals of the ancient world were slowly returning, but with a focus on art, beauty, and fertility interwined with wealth and power. By the time we reached the Victorian era, the bust had become central to fashion and social status. Women of this period were expected to embrace an exaggerated hourglass figure, and corsets were the tool to achieve it. These tightly laced garments were designed to cinch in the waist and lift the bust, creating a pronounced chest that once again symbolized fertility, beauty, and wealth. The Victorian corset was an instrument of both allure and control. It pushed the bust up and out, creating a highly sexualized silhouette, while also restricting women's movements, physically embodying the constraints placed on women by society. The focus on a larger bust was tied to the overall obsession with the bust-waist-hip ratio, a formula for femininity that still lingers today. The bust was not just a symbol of beauty, but of moral virtue and social standing, with fuller, well-presented chest seen as the mark of a true lady. The 1920s brought with it a dramatic rebellion against the strict confines of the Victorian silhouette. Women were throwing off their corsets, and with that came a complete rejection of the curvaceous figure. 
the flapper era celebrated a flat, boyish figure, with small busts becoming the new standard of beauty. This was a time of liberation, where women began to embrace shorter hairstyles, looser clothing, and androgynous shapes. Breasts were out of fashion, but many women even bound their chest to achieve that sleek, straight-lined silhouette. It's crazy to think that women would actually bind their chest to make them look flatter. But as with all trends, this too was fleeting. By the 1950s, curves made a roaring comeback. Icons like Marilyn Monroe, Jane Mansfield, and Sophia Loren became the face and body of beauty. The hourglass figure returned, with a full bust symbolizing femininity, glamour, and sex appeal. Hollywood was largely responsible for the shift, as silver screen sirens became the epitome of womanhood. The fashion industry followed suit, and suddenly padded bras and lingerie became essential to creating that exaggerated figure. What's fascinating here is the cultural context. Post-World War II, society was trying to re-establish traditional gender roles. The voluptuous bust became a visual marker of a woman's return to her domestic role as a wife and mother. And once again, women were feeling the pressure to live up to a very specific body ideal. The obsession with the bust didn't stop there. As we transitioned into the 1960s and 70s, the sexual revolution brought with it more diverse body ideals, but the pressure to have the right bust shape still persisted. The introduction of new fashion trends like the braless look and the rise of the second wave of feminism encouraged women to embrace their natural bodies, but the cultural fixation on the bust was far from over. In the 80s, a new era of beauty standards took hold, one that would forever change the narrative around women bodies. The rise of supermodels like Cindy Crawford and Claudia Schiffer in the 1990s once again glorified a full chest as a marker of beauty. But with this decade came a shift from natural curves to surgically enhanced bodies, setting the stage for the new era of implants and the pursuit of artificial perfection, which we'll discuss in the next chapter. The story of the bust is one of constant flux. Across time, women have been asked to conform to ever-changing ideals, with their chest often acting as a barometer of society's views on femininity, morality, and sexuality. As we've seen, the bust is more than just a part of the body, it's a symbol of identity, a representation of societal power, and a reflection of cultural values. Chapter 2 The Curve Curse as society began to glorify curvier figures, it created an insidious side effect, the curve curse. The term encapsulates the complex, often damaging expectations placed on women to have the ideal bust size. And while a full bust might have seemed like the golden standard, it came with a host of pressures and complications that affected women across the board. The perfect bust, a double-edged sword. Throughout the mid-20th century, the media and pop culture increasingly celebrated a fuller bust. This was reflected in Hollywood fashion and advertisements, where the image of a curvy, voluptuous woman was not just a symbol of beauty, but also of success and desirability. Think of icons like Marilyn Monroe, Sophia Loren, and Brigitte Bardot, whose bodies were framed as the ultimate expression of femininity. The larger and more pronounced the bust, the more feminine you were perceived to be. But the problem with this ideal is that it's just that, an ideal. For many women, their natural body shape didn't align with the busty image portrayed on screen and in magazines. Women who were naturally flat-chested or didn't have the exaggerated curves popularized by beauty standards often felt left out of the conversation battling feelings of inadequacy and alienation. The dark side of objectification. For women who did fit the curvy mold, there was a different kind of burden. The objectification that came with having a fuller chest. The curse of curves wasn't just about beauty ideals. It was about how society viewed and treated women with larger busts. From unwanted attention in public spaces to being sexualized in the workplace, Many women found that their bodies became a topic of public conversation, whether they liked it or not. And it kind of reminds me of Joan on Mad Men, how people treated her so differently because of her curvy figure. 
Women with larger busts often experience a type of objectification that reduces them to their chest size. Instead of being recognized for their intelligence, talents, or personality, they were often viewed through a purely sexual lens. Their bust size became the focus of attention, making them the target of assumptions about their sexuality, promiscuity, and even their character. This unwanted attention led to a phenomenon where women with naturally large chests felt the need to downplay their curves by wearing baggy clothing, avoiding certain outfits, or even slouching to make their bust appear smaller. The very thing that society had elevated as ideal, full breasts, became a source of discomfort and scrutiny. The impact of media and the fashion industry. Let's talk about how the media and fashion industries perpetuated the curve curse. The rise of advertising in the 50s and 60s didn't just market products, it marketed ideals, and the ideal bust size became a significant selling point in ads aimed at women. Products like padded bras, push-up bras, and bust-enhancing clothing exploded onto the market, all designed to help women achieve that coveted hourglass shape. In the 1990s, supermodels like Cindy Crawford, Claudia Schiffer, and Naomi Campbell were the faces of this curvy standard, with their tall, statuesque frames and larger-than-life busts setting a new bar for beauty. The Wonder Bra ad campaign of the 90s, with its famous tagline, Hello Boys, epitomized this obsession. Breasts were no longer just a part of a woman's body, they were a marketing tool. The message was clear, bigger was better, and if you weren't naturally endowed, there were products to help you out. However, the fashion industry's obsession with the bust wasn't without contradictions. While lingerie brands and advertising celebrated large chests, the world of high fashion often preferred a smaller, more androgynous figure. Fashion designers in the 90s, such as Calvin Klein, favored models with lean, flat-chested bodies that fit the minimalistic aesthetic of the era. This duality where popular culture praised large breasts, but high fashion elevated smaller ones, only added to the confusion and pressure that women felt about their own bodies. The pressure to conform and the rise of enhancements. For the many women who didn't fit the curvy mold naturally, the pressure to conform became overwhelming. And that's when the beauty industry stepped in with a so-called solution enhancements. Breast implants, which first appeared in the 1960s, became increasingly popular in the 80s and 90s, when medical advancements made implants safer and more accessible. The idea of fixing your body to fit society's beauty ideals was sold as empowerment. But was it really? For many women, the decision to get breast implants wasn't about a personal choice as much as it was about meeting societal expectations. With the constant bombardment of images glorifying large breasts in magazines, movies, and TV shows, women began to breast implants as a, as a way to fit in and feel more accepted. Plastic surgery clinics capitalized on this demand, offering solutions to anyone who felt that they didn't measure up, literally. Shows like Extreme Makeover and The Swan further pushed the idea that larger breasts equaled beauty, happiness, and self-worth. The rise of reality TV in the early 2000s brought breast implants into living rooms across the world, normalizing the idea that enhancing your body surgically was not only acceptable, but desirable. Yet, while well, breast implants gave many women the confidence they had long been seeking, it also created a dangerous precedent. The normalization of surgical enhancement blurred the line between empowerment and societal pressure. Women were now expected to achieve perfection at any cost, and for those who didn't want to go under the knife, the feeling of inadequacy remained. The mental and emotional toll of the curve curse. The curve curse didn't just impact women physically, it took an emotional toll. Women who felt that they didn't have the right bust size often struggled with feelings of inferiority, shame, and body dysmorphia. Even women who had gone through breast implants sometimes found themselves questioning whether they made the decision for themselves or to fit into society's mold. The curse became an unspoken part of the female experience. Whether you were curvy, flat, or somewhere in between, the pressure to meet beauty standards could feel suffocating. The cultural obsession with the bust wasn't just about appearance, it was about power, control, and worth. 
As we move forward, we'll look at how the societal fixation led to a seismic shift in body enhancement culture and the rise of fake boobs in our next chapter. But for now, the question remains, how did we get to a point where so many women felt the need to alter their bodies to feel beautiful? Chapter 3, The Rise of Fake Boobs by the late 20th century, science and surgery met society's obsession with the perfect body, and the result was the rise of breast implants. Silicone implants made their debut in the 60s, offering a revolutionary solution for those wanting to achieve fuller busts without natural genetics on their side. But this was more than just a medical breakthrough. It was a cultural shift changing the way women could shape their bodies to meet society's expectations. The story of breast implants is as much about reclaiming power as it is about aesthetics. In a world where women's bodies had long been controlled by fashion trends, societal norms, and patriarchal ideals, plastic surgery presented something new, choice. Suddenly, women could decide to alter their bodies, not to meet someone else's expectations, but to meet their own. The opportunity to go under the knife and emerge with the ideal body shape in a matter of hours was empowering for some. The early days, silicone implants in the 1960s and 1970s. The 1960s saw the first silicone breast implant developed by two plastic surgeons, Frank Garreau and Thomas Cronin. Their innovation offered women a way to enlarge the breast permanently sparking curiosity and demand among those dissatisfied with their natural size. Initially, the procedure was seen as something exclusive, available only to those with the financial means to undergo such transformation. Early adopters were often actresses, models, and socialites, women who lived under the spotlight and relied on their appearance for success. Breast augmentation promised them the allure and femininity that society valued so highly. By the 1970s, the procedure began to trickle down to the wider public, but it remained relatively niche and somewhat taboo. However, the early days of breast implants weren't without complications. Many women reported problems with the silicone implants, from leakage to hardening of the breast tissue, raising concerns about the safety and durability of the procedure. But despite the risk, the lure of a fuller bust proved too powerful for many to resist. The 1980s, beauty pageants, Hollywood, and the boom of breast implants. The 1980s marked the beginning of breast implants becoming part of mainstream culture, with shows like Dynasty and Dallas dominating TV screens. The beauty ideal shifted once again, this time bigger and better. The curvaceous, busty figure became the new standard of desirability, especially among the wealthy and elite. Women like Joan Collins and Linda Evans, with their larger-than-life chests and glamorous wardrobes, represented the peak feminine power and sensuality. During this time, beauty pageants also played a significant role in promoting this new ideal. Contestants, particularly in the Miss America and Miss Universe competitions, began to turn to plastic surgery, including breast implants, to enhance their chances of winning. For many young women, the pageant stage wasn't just about beauty, it was about fitting into a hyper-feminine mold that placed a premium on curves with a fuller bust seen as the key to success. The procedure gained even more popularity as celebrities began to openly discuss their breast implants. The cultural conversation shifted. Instead of breast implants being a secret shame, they were becoming a status symbol. The message was clear. If you wanted to stand out, bigger was better. The 1990s, Pamela Anderson, Baywatch, and the plastic surgery explosion. If the 1980s laid the groundwork, the 1990s was when breast implants exploded into the mainstream. Perhaps no one symbolized this era of larger-than-life busts more than Pamela Anderson as the star of Baywatch. Anderson became the poster girl for breast implants, with her exaggerated curves becoming iconic and synonymous with 1990s beauty standards. Her bust was a cultural phenomenon, admired and replicated by women all over the world. At the same time, reality TV began to emerge, 
and with it came a more open conversation about cosmetic enhancements. The shows like The Real World and Beverly Hills 90210 brought plastic surgery into living rooms across the country. Suddenly, breast implants wasn't just for celebrities or the elite. It was accessible and even normalized for everyday women. By the late 1990s, the procedure had shed much of its taboo, and the stigma around getting fake boobs began to fade. Doctors advertised their services more aggressively, and women were bombarded with images of celebrities, supermodels, and reality stars flaunting their breast implants. It wasn't just about beauty anymore. It was about confidence, empowerment, and fitting in with a cultural obsession with perfection. Breast implants became the most popular cosmetic surgery of the decade, and the demand for larger and more natural looking enhancements grew exceptionally. The 2000s and 2010s, the rise of reality TV, red carpet glam, and the quest for perfection. The 2000s and 2010s brought with them an even greater emphasis on cosmetic enhancements as breast implants became part of the larger cultural shift toward bodily perfection. Shows like Extreme Makeover and The Swan, I remember watching these shows definitely when I was younger, openly promoted a plastic surgery as a way to fix insecurities, turning breast implants into a solution for women looking at to transform their lives. These shows combined with the rise of reality TV, stars like Kim Kardashian and Heidi Montag took breast implants to new heights. With every red carpet event showcasing celebrities with perfectly sculpted bodies and fuller chests, the media frenzy around plastic surgery created unrealistic expectations for women. Celebrities and influencers flaunted their surgically enhanced figures, and breast augmentation was often seen as the ticket to fitting in with Hollywood's ideal. For many women, the pressure to have the perfect body wasn't just about self-confidence, it was about feeling competitive in a world that placed high value on appearance. The risks and regrets, health concerns and unrealistic expectations. However, as with all beauty trends, the rise of fake boobs wasn't without its downsides. Alongside the glamorous images of augmented breasts came a growing number of stories about botched surgeries, implants gone wrong, and health complications. Women began to report issues like implant leakage and scar tissue hardening around the implant and even autoimmune disorders triggered by the foreign objects in their bodies. The pursuit of perfection often came at a cost, emotionally, physically, and financially. Many women began to question whether breast implants was worth the risk, especially as the health consequences of implants became more widely known. Some faced the painful decision of having their implants removed after experiencing severe health issues, and I've read other people having that, where they're like, physically ill for years and they couldn't even figure out what was wrong with them until they actually got the implants removed, while others struggled with the emotional toll of constantly chasing an unattainable ideal. At the heart of this movement was a growing realization, breast implants wasn't always the answer to confidence or beauty. For many women, the decision to undergo surgery was rooted in societal pressure rather than personal desire. And while breast implants offered temporary satisfaction, they didn't always bring the self-esteem boost that many had hoped for. Chapter 4. The Shame of Being Flat While society has long celebrated curves, the flip side of this cultural fixation has been the experience of women with smaller busts. For decades, the message has been clear. A full bust is synonymous with femininity, desirability, and beauty. For those who didn't naturally meet the standard, the pressure to conform could feel overwhelming. The shame of being flat is a story that's all too familiar for countless women who have felt invisible overlooked or judged because of their bodies didn't align with the busty ideal. Invisible in fashion, the exclusion of flat-chested women. The fashion industry, while ever-changing, has historically placed a strong emphasis on the ideal of a full bust. The 1950s with icons like Marilyn Monroe and Jane Mansfield glorified the hourglass figures, making fuller chests the gold standard of beauty. 
Flat-chested women often felt excluded, with fashion trends and lingerie designed specifically to enhance curves. Even in more recent decades, the message has been clear. Full bus are in, lingerie advertisements, bikini photo shoots, and red carpet events often glorify women with larger chests, leaving flat-chested women feeling invisible. The fashion industry's one-size-fits-all approach to beauty left little room for body diversity. Forcing flat-chested women to either opt for bras that create an illusion of curves or remain on the sidelines of the beauty conversation. Body image in the media, reinforcing the busty ideal. Hollywood and the media have also played significant roles in reinforcing the busty ideal. From the pinup stars of the 50s to the bombshells of the 90s, the women who were elevated as the epitome of beauty almost always had fuller busts. Whether it was Pamela Anderson running down the beach in Baywatch, or the countless magazine covers featuring actresses and models with pronounced cleavage. The message was clear, to be sexy and feminine you needed curves. Flat-chested women, meanwhile, were often relegated to supporting roles or portrayed as the quirky or cute rather than beautiful or glamorous. This media representation further ingrained the idea that a woman's worth was tied to her body shape. It's no surprise, then, that the countless flat-chested women began to internalize these messages, feeling as if they were missing out on a key component of femininity and beauty. Icons who defied the norm, flat-chested women in the spotlight. Despite the overwhelming focus on fuller busts, several flat-chested icons have emerged over the decades, challenging the narrative and showing that beauty comes in many shapes and sizes. Audrey Hepburn, for instance, became a global icon in the 50s and 60s, not because of her curves, but because of her grace, elegance, and timeless style. Her smaller bust became part of her signature look proving that femininity and beauty aren't defined by a single body type. Similarly, the 1960s supermodel Twiggy broke the mold with her boyish figure and flat chest. At the height of the curvy fashion trend, Twiggy's androgynous look became revolutionary, giving flat-chested women a new icon to look up to. Her success in the modeling world was a reminder that beauty standards are cyclical and that sometimes the body types that are overlooked can become the next big trend. In more recent years, actresses like Keira Knightley have embraced their flat chest with confidence, refusing to conform to Hollywood's pressure to undergo surgery. Keira Knightley, in particular, has spoken openly about body image, highlighting the importance of self-acceptance and rejecting the idea that women need to enhance their bodies to fit in. Her success as a leading actress further proves that talent and beauty are not defined by cup size. The shift towards body positivity, reclaiming power. In recent years, a body positivity movement has emerged, challenging long-standing beauty standards and embracing body diversity. Flat-chested women, once marginalized in the beauty conversation, had begun reclaiming their power. Rather than feeling pressure to enhance their busts, more and more women are embracing their natural shapes, rejecting the notion that a full chest is necessary to be feminine or beautiful. And it does seem like a lot of people are actually taking out their breast implants now. I know Pamela Anderson did, or maybe she just got smaller ones. Social media platforms like Instagram and TikTok have played a huge role in this shift. Influencers and celebrities now celebrate body diversity more openly, and flat-chested women are sharing their stories, building communities, and breaking down the shame associated with their body type. Hashtags like small boob problems and flat and proud have created spaces for women to express their frustrations and triumphs, fostering a sense of solidarity. Fashion has also started to reflect the shift. Brands that once prioritized prioritize curvy, bust-enhancing silhouettes are now creating more inclusive clothing lines that celebrate a variety of body types. Flat-chested women can now find dresses, tops, and lingerie that fit and flatter their natural shape without needing to create the illusion of curves. This newfound representation has had a powerful impact, showing women that they can be beautiful and sexy and confident exactly as they are. And I definitely think that that whole like androgynous skinny look is coming in back in style too. Embracing your body, your choice. So what's the real takeaway from all this? It's simple but powerful. Breasts, like so many other aspects of our body, have long been used as symbols to define and confine femininity. For centuries, they've been at the center of beauty ideals, fashion trends, and societal standards, each era bringing its own version of what the perfect bust should look like. But the truth is, there is no perfect bust, just 
like there is no perfect way to be a woman. From the ancient Greek goddesses who celebrated curves as symbols of fertility, to the 1920s flapper revolution that rebelled against those very ideals, to the modern rise of breast implants and the reclaiming of flat-chested beauty, the journey of the bust tells a story of how society's views on women's bodies have evolved. And while society may still have its standards, we are living in a time where those standards are being questioned, rewritten and redefined by women themselves. In today's world, the conversation around breasts has become more nuanced, more personal and more importantly, more inclusive. The rise of the body positivity movement has encouraged women of all shapes and sizes to embrace their bodies as they are without the need to fit into someone else's beauty ideal. Whether you're celebrating natural curves, considering breast implants, or embracing your smaller chest, what matters most is how you feel about your body, which is so true. And the most important lesson from all of this, confidence comes from within. Whether you've been pressured to have a fuller bust, felt the shame of being flat, face the curve cursed head on, or the journey towards self-love is deeply personal and complex. And by the end, it's about finding what makes you feel comfortable in your own skin. And there's no right or wrong answer to this. And if you want breast implants, I mean, I'm not judging in any way. If that's something that you want to do and makes you happy, then go for it. Breasts may be a small part of the body, but the conversations they spark are about something much bigger and how we as women define our own sense of worth, beauty, and confidence. And it is weird thinking about over the at least the 20th century like how much weight is put on someone's breast size and like how it's defined as someone's worth and it, it is weird when you think about it because I think women for the most part don't really care I mean I've never thought about it that much but I do remember in like the early 2000s and late 90s how there was a lot of emphasis on people getting breast implants and breasts but I think it's definitely shifted now. So thank you for watching. Let me know if you enjoyed this exploration on the history of bus, beauty stand, and body image. And don't forget to subscribe for more deep dives into the stories behind our beauty ideals. And don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments below. Have you had breast implants before? Is it something you'd be interested in doing in the future? I'm always curious to other people's thoughts. All right, don't forget to check out some of my other vintage videos.